Hi friends, it's Sylvia uh, with Running with Needles and Scissors. Um, it is Sunday afternoon, almost six o'clock, or it's past six o'clock already. Uh, we're losing a lot of sunlight. Uh, it stays late, late now, but we have rain clouds coming in, which we desperately need. So um, I had to turn on the light. My glasses are a little bit reflecting, so I will take them off so it's not so distracting. All right. This has been a week of mania starts and working on, and I had a lot of fun. I showed some of the stuff on my Instagram, but not everything. Now, I forgot to show you my scissor. I, you know, told you I would do it and then totally forgot. And I realized it when I, when I watched the video back, but um, somebody also pointed it out to me. It's like, you didn't show your scissor. I'm like, okay, I will. Sorry. So this is, my absolute favorite scissor. It's not a beautiful scissor, but it is a, a, a most excellent scissor. It's made by Kai in Japan, um, K-A-I. Um, maybe you can see, there you go. And you can see how sharp it is, and there's Millie saying, how dare you close the door on me? I always try and it never works, hold on. Ouch, that was my toe. All right, girl, come in. Okay, she's been barking a little bit, so I was, I tried to leave her outside, but obviously that doesn't work, so I'm petting her right now because she's like, Mom, you left me outside. Okay, back to the scissor. Um, so this is made in Japan, and those of you familiar with uh, Japanese workmanship, especially uh, metal, stuff like needles, uh, for our industry, it's most excellent. These are really sharp wonderful scissors. Um, they have nice big holes for my fingers and my super fat thumb, so I can get that in there. I'll, talk, I'll tell you a bit about my thumb in just a minute. Um, anyways, and they're super pointy, and so being angled like this, they also, they also have straight ones. They have great scissors for sewing and household and uh, all kinds, uh, and you just, if you Google them, Kai, K-A-I, Scissors. I can put the link below. Um, and sign up for their newsletter. They don't send a newsletter unless they have a sale and then it's 20 or 25% off. And free shipping, I think over a certain amount. Um, well worth getting. I have sewing scissors from them. They cut like butter, they're great. But anyway, so this little angle and the super sh uh, sharp tips allow me just to go and cut my stitches when I'm frogging, which I do often. Now, if it's just a couple of stitches that I have to go back, you know, let's say 20, 20, around that, I will I will frog it. But if it's more and it's the, my mistake is further back, I just cut it out. I I I don't I don't take the time to frog that that floss. Not only that, but the floss gets really flo uh, fuzzy. So. Um, and the only other time I will try and save my floss is if it's a kit and I'm thinking I'll, I'll need it. I'll need the floss. So excellent scissors. Oh, my key fob, my key fob, my scissor fob. And it stopped barking. The wind is blowing where the storm's coming in. So she's, you know, she, stop. She wants to let everybody know that she's on guard. Okay, so this is a Lady Dot uh, scissor fob and I got the last one from the attic and I think it's so, so cute. It's got all this jingly jangly down here and you know, a little bit of, you know, fun stuff up here. And these are, I think, locker. I'm not sure, locker tags. But um, I have a little threader in the back from, I believe my big toe made this one. And um, yeah, it, it jingles like keys and it makes me just happy to grab these scissors. I have them on a magnet that is on my stitching light. So they, they're pretty secure there. My other scissor that I really love is a Premax. I brought the, oh, that's close. Premax ring lock, it's an Italian scissor. I need to support Italy, they really got nailed. Um, and I just bought a new pair because, and they're also super pointy and very nice.
nicely sharp and again lots of room for my unusually fat thumb to go through um, the only problem with these scissors are is that when you drop them they tend to land on their tip and that ruins the scissor and I have dropped mine a number of times and these you can drop and they are perfectly all right so my thumb so I have these very fat thumbs they're called club thumbs it's a genetic um, an oncology disorder no <laughs> but it's a genetic thing it comes from my dad's side my uncle has these thumbs um, it also leads to really small hands I have very um, short or not well, I can fit into a six, six and a half if the, if the shoe is wide enough. Uh, so I have a very wide um, foot with itty bitty toes on them. Uh, very unfortunate for a girl. Um, so <laughs> sandals are, are always difficult because my foot's wide and so trying to get through the front part of the sandal is an issue. And, and there's brands I know that, that will fit me and you know, a lot of, I can't wear strappy sandals. It just doesn't work for me. Um, Birkenstocks work really well though. <laughs> so uh, yeah, and my brothers, I have two brothers, one older, one younger. I'm the only girl, I'm in the middle. They both have very long fingers, beautiful. My mom has beautiful hands, um, long toes, beautiful feet. You know, me as a girl, I got I got the short stumpy stuff um, my husband has also very little like very small they're not small they're fat hands but the fingers aren't very long so my kids have teeny tiny well my oldest daughter my oldest son have very small hands um, my oldest son's feet are okay uh, but those two have teeny tiny hands. The other two, the two younger ones, <clears throat> have more normal size hands. So that's the thumb and hand saga. Anyways, there is a Facebook group for club thumbed people as a support group. And um, Megan Fox has club thumbs, or one any, anyway. So yeah, there's one, I think it's the second uh, Transformer movie. She's standing there holding onto a tree and you can clearly see this thumb of hers. And I was like, oh, you know, she has, she has that thumb. Um, I've only met outside of Megan Fox, who I haven't met, uh, two people in my life that have this thumb. All right, enough thumbs up to the thumb and now we'll go on to Mania. I think the first thing I worked on was the third small sampler from you and I. And there you go. It's, it's super cute. Millie, stop it now. Millie. Sorry. So I thought I'd fill in the grass, but that's not what I did. Ooh, there's a little bit of stuff on here. I, oh, this needs a paper. So let's see here, there's more paper underneath. Okay, so I finished filling finish the row of alphabet it's, this is a 40 count exactly what I don't know and I put in the sheep legs and then I went on to oh to um, stitch the sheep I'm so, I'm so sorry. that is enough that's enough outside then and no barking just outside oh. sometimes they get hyper vigilant and it is, and Millie just loves to bark. I am so sorry. Okay, my sheep, scared me and my sheep. So, and then you can see this sheep is, has these Kringles, I call them Kris Kringles, but they're like cam coils. Uh, hmm, I'd have to open the pattern, hold on. And hope, you know, hold it to the side so I don't accidentally flash you guys with my pattern. Uh. Cam's coil, yep. So you have to coil this floss about three times around and then tack it down, couch it down. Um, you see I have various sizes going. Uh, it's not easy. And so I was using like two darning needles, the eyes of the darning needles and wrapping it around and sliding it off. But it's, it's a chore, so I'm almost done with that. And then you fill these with French knots. 
How fun is that? Well, it looks super cute when I'm done, but it is a little painful. Okay. And I have to say that whatever this linen is, it feels like Zweigart, as a matter of fact. Um, it's pretty easy to stitch the alphabet, the over one alphabet. Then, after that, let me move that down here, I went on and worked on Heartstrings um, Sewn in Friendship. And this is on 40 count. Vintage Mocha by Zweigart, and I'll fold this in the back, so this is as far as I got in my time with it. So I finished the white, and then I came down, and I think if I look at the photo, this is the bottom, So I'm, or I'm almost at the bottom. I just wanted to see how wide it's going to get. So that would be, you know, then it, and then you just fill it in. Um, that's where it is. I'm enjoying that one. It's a really sweet design. Okay, and then I worked on the Santa, the Red Santa. And while I was what, uh, while I was working on Red Santa from Birds of the Feather, I was watching this disaster movie kind of thing series from Belgium, and. So they're speaking all kinds of languages. They're speaking Russian, they're speaking Belgian, French, Flemish. Um, they're speaking other languages. And so I'm reading a lot of subtitles, but then the majority of the dialogue, oh, Spanish, they're speaking Spanish, Italian, they're speaking Italian. But the majority of it is in English. Um, Anyway, so it was this movie about when the sun goes up, everybody dies, and they're on a plane, and they're, they're just flying through the night. I know it sounds weird, but I, so I'm watching this, you know, and I like disaster movies, and I made a mistake on my Santa um, on the hat. I counted, I put in two extra rows. Anyways, but I left it in because I was a little frustrated. So he's got a, a, a taller hat, and he's a little wider but I think he'll, he'll work out fine. I know he looks funny now, but I will fill in the eyes before I put him away. Um, and then he'll just go into rotations in my morning, in my morning stitching. So this is 40 count weeks cocoa, I believe. Oh, a little fuzzy, but there it is. Okay. So that was Santa. Then, I worked on the kit by Samplers Not Forgotten, the Rose Bouquet kit, there we go. And that was done without the disaster movie, which, which was a much better idea. And so this is, has, is this the top, oh, so this is the top. Or it doesn't actually matter in this, this pattern, but this is where I am. And so I need to do the other flower. I need to come around here still with the leaves and then do the other rows and then it has to be filled in completely with the green. Here is my breadboard with the floss and you see I've got plenty of green to go with. And uh, somebody asked me how I prep my breadboards and I will go over that after I finish up the mania stuff and then I will go on to haul. So just in case there's, you know, you're not interested um, you can bail uh, once I'm done with mania then you know I'm going to talk about breadboards and then go on to haul. All right the last one as I am super enchanted with I just love 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 it it's the patience 1898 sampler and I didn't realize how teeny tiny this thing is I've got some threads here on the side corked okay so let's try to give you that's it. I mean, there's more down below, but this is the width of it. It's just so cute. It's so stinking cute. So this is probably one of the first things I will grab to work on in the mornings. So I'm planning once mania is over to just rotate these through my morning uh, stitching and possibly a little bit on the weekend to get them done. This is on 40 count vintage Palomino by Lakeside Linen. Don't ask me why they discontinued it. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. 
So I've got a couple pieces hoarded. But this all came together in a, in a kit. This kit and the pattern is from Hands to Work. Um, and since she started designing and re-releasing some of her older things, maybe this will come out. Um, darling. Darling, darling. Okay, that wraps up the, the week. So my mania starts on Fridays. My week starts on Fridays because that was May 1st. And so what I do is I have off Fridays uh, and so I do, I start two projects on Friday, two projects on Saturday, one on Sunday. And then Monday through Thursday, I work on the four projects that were Friday, Saturday projects. Sunday gets a little bit more extended time. So that evens out. And then comes the next Friday and I start my, my following week, what I have planned. Um, I put in for some vacation time. I'm hoping I'm going to get, they'll, they'll approve it. Uh, we're down one person. I told you my colleague is on furlough in Great Britain. But hopefully my boss will say, sure, take those four days of vacation, which nets me out to 12 days of no work because there's holidays in the beginning and the end. So let's hope so. And I know and Memorial Day falls right during that week. I don't get it off uh, since I, I work for a European company, but my husband does. It would be nice if we had the day together. Not that we don't have plenty of time that we're spending together due to uh, Corona. All right, so then let's go back, let's go to Friday's uh, starts. I started uh, Today is a Good Day by Bend Creek, and it says today is a good day to have a good day, and I think that's every day. Every day we can have a good day. It's a mindset thing. I'm not stitching this for myself. I'm stitching this for my daughter in who's in DC going to law school and I just wanted her to have that um, sort of to remind herself that um, you know she is amongst the privileged and you know every day is a good day for her should be anyways uh, compared to the rest of the world I mean I get I get news and you know have a view on people with really, really hard lives. Um, I told you guys I work for a charity that supports um, persecuted Christians in countries that are persecuted and where they are persecuted. And it's it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to hear. And um, anyway, so I just know how incredibly fortunate we are, especially as women, um, being born on the Western side of the world. Um, you know, we've won the lottery already and we have so many luxuries. And so even though law school is hard and this semester was particularly hard because they were doing online school and it doesn't lend itself very good, very well to online schooling and, and she was frustrated and, and having a hard time with it, which I totally understand. I just wanted to remind her that we can have a good day. It's our choice. She likes purple. So I had some different colors picked out, but then I was talking to her and I said, what's your favorite color? Because I obviously don't know that. Um, <laughs> I don't know everybody's favorite color. Oh my gosh, there is a storm raging outside. I mean, the, the rain is going sideways. Ooh, the high winds. Okay, well, let's hope we, we don't blow away. So here is what I started it on. And I just got this far in my morning stitching. It's a silk by Vicki Clayton. I did pull some off and put it on a on a little tag. I didn't label it. It's, it's an unknown silk because it came as a you know thing like that. Um, and obviously you can see that I made my strands super long. That works for me, uh, uh, especially with silk. I can I can stitch with really long, a really long thread. Goodness, and I like it. And this is 36 count flex. And I actually bought this uh, Zweigart linen, as you can see by the orange stripey here. I bought this to work on the Jeanette Douglas's um, series, um, seasonal series. So I got did the spring bird that I gave away the pattern in the, the rest of the threads. And so the next one up will be summer. And I needed, I wanted them, I want to put them 
in one frame. Um, I have an idea of how I want to do that. Anyways, so a long, narrow frame, one on top of the other. And so I want the linen to be the same. Okay, so today is a good day. I'm glad we're getting rain. Maybe not the storm, but uh, I'm so glad we're getting rain. We are headed into our third year of drought, believe it or not, in Germany. And uh, we've lost quite a few of the conifer trees. Evidently, their roots aren't as deep. And so the year before, the summer before last was super, super dry. And then there wasn't enough rain in the winter, and we went into another... Uh, dry summer and that's when they um, they just couldn't make it because they never recovered over the winter and it looks like it'll well we're, we're way behind in rain again this year so I'll take any sort of rain all right now um, those were that's one oh okay here we go and the Friday afternoon or evening start was Nest by Summerhouse Stitch Works, and it calls for 32 count dull linen, and it's stitched in DMC. I uh, don't have dull linen. I didn't want to stitch it on 32 count with two threads, so I'm doing it on 36 count ale. And um, I only got, I didn't get very far in the evening. I tend to be quite tired in the evening. And, my stitching isn't the most productive, but here is the ale, and I think it, I think, here we go, we'll put, ooh, yeah, see, so you now we're, we're losing our light. Okay, so anyways, this is my start. What is throwing a shadow? I can't tell. Okay, so here it is, and this is the, this is how wide it is, how, yeah, how wide it is, so, and then, the drum, you're going, yeah, well, that'll never make a drum, Sylvia, and you're right, it won't, but it gets fabric attached to it, so it gets, um, oh, there's a sticker right on top of it, but if you can look right down here, it has, it has fabric, and then a piece of wool, and a little, a little birdie, so I think it's going to look super cute. Here are the colors, hold on, I have the DMC is bobbinated and one that isn't. So I, I'm st I'm not bobbinating my DMC anymore. I, when I need it, I will just put it on a on a tag and let it hang. So these this thought was a challenge, and there goes one. There goes the green, but you already saw the green. So this these are the colors, and I think they'll look uh, they'll look just fine on the linen. Let me see if I can get the green up here. But you already saw it. There we go. Okay, so I also bought the uh, linen for the other two. So they also call for picture this, this plus, and I tend to only do 40 count, um, but I went for some 36 count because I felt it would be closer in size. So not that small and 40 count, and I'll show you the linen that I got, and I'll tell you where I got it after when I get to my new stash haul stuff. So, and yesterday evening, I started the Blackbird Design Noel stocking. And that was fully kitted. Here are the flosses, which I think are so, 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 so pretty. And pull them up against the fabric here. So, here you go. It came with fabric, which was a 32 count r and &R. I'll tell you what it was. Sheep straw. And so when I pulled it out and was gonna get ready to go, I was like, ooh, okay, this is 32 count. And nothing against 32 count. I just don't wanna stitch with two threads. That's not my thing, not necessarily. When I can avoid it, I, I try. And so I, you know, I cast about me to the left and to the right and um, picked up a few pieces of linen that I had and settled on my, again, my favorite, favorite, linen, which is the 40 count straw by Zweigart that I tea and coffee stained. Um, so I just started it on 40 count and this is, this is as far as I got. So, and when we hold up the pattern, 
Oops. And anyways, this stocking is like eight and a half inches big. I'm not, no, I want mine. You know, I don't think the other ones are that big, but I haven't looked at the pattern, so we'll see. But I think it's, it's a super pretty one. So I'm excited to stitch this. This is this odd piece of linen. Here's the Plum Street Sampler. Um, the number two from the cereal bowl on it, and then it goes this way. I mean, I've used it, but I can put smalls on it still, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, so there's that one. And then this morning, Sunday morning, while I was watching a church service in the States, and then I did our church service here all on Zoom, not the church service, the church service in the States, excuse me, was on YouTube. I really like Troy Brewer with Open Door Church. Interestingly enough, it's open, also called Open Door. And he's down in Burleson, Texas. And then uh, our church here in Germany, my um, independent church, it's called. It's an independent church. So the churches here, you have the state churches, so no separation of um, church and state in Germany, interestingly enough. You have to pay church tax. So that is what gets supports the churches that are state churches. And then there's the free churches. And they do not, they're not part of the state churches. And they do not get any of the church tax. And you do not pay church tax when you are a part of those churches because you're tithing. And so you just exempt yourself. You have to mark on a registration form um, that you are, they ask you, are you Catholic? Are you Protestant? Are you something else? And so if you're Catholic or Protestant, you mark those two, you pay church taxes. I think with something else, you are exempt. Um, and people do, they pay, they pay their church taxes. Um, we also pay taxes for TV and radio. So you get a bill every uh, year. And I think it's a household tax. So it's not a per person tax, but a household tax. And it's 45, 25. I don't know. I don't pay it. We don't pay it because we're not, I'm a citizen, but my husband isn't. And he is with the NATO forces. He falls under a NATO agreement. And so we're, we're in that sense, we're tax exempt. Um, so I don't pay like dog tax here is, is yes, you pay taxes for your dogs. Um, about 350 euros a year per dog. So we don't pay that either. Thank goodness, that's, that's a lot of money. Okay, that's enough of the tax. It, okay, so understand that Germany is partially socialistic. It's a socialistic democratic country and so we pay a lot of taxes. Like the sales tax is 19% or seven and a half percent, but most of the stuff you buy, um, clothing, yarn, anything stitchy stuff, cars, furniture, some of the uh, food is 19%, um, books, anything is 19% outside of a few items. And I think it's more in the, um, yeah, grocery area that you pay a little less. So, and we do pay those, we do pay the sales tax. Um, all right, then the last thing I started this morning, and I've been dying to start this ever since I picked it up at the attic last year at summer school, is the hands-on design stitch everyday drum. I saw it there. I mean, it was like we walked in and boom, there was this drum and my friend and I were like, oh, we gotta do this. So I decided I wanted to start it really badly. Um, this drum is big. It's not, it, it's a drum. So I was like, I don't want to stitch on 32 count. You'll hear me say this over and over. It was called for 32 count. 32 count, I don't know, because I, I left my pattern upstairs because I didn't want to accidentally flash you guys because that's happened to me way too many times. So I'm like, I'm going to prepare and leave my pattern upstairs. Um, so I took a 36 count. And this 36 count is uh, by Sassy's Hand Painted Fabric. I don't think she's in business anymore. And this color is called Honey. And this is what I stitched this morning. So I'm sorry we're losing the light, but I, I gotta get this done. So um, there are a couple of specialty stitches. Here is a 
a satin stitch. I, that's stitched with two. This is all stitched with one. So this is stitched with two. And then here are Smyrna crosses right here. And that is stitched with one. The only color changes I made, let's see if we can't move it. Okay, so this is about a, a good color. The only color changes I made is that this is called for uh, Wigs Dye Works Skinny Dip. I used um, a old willow hand dyed thread that has been flying around. So this is uh, Quaker Colors Gratitude Rose. I think it's pretty close to Skinny Dip right here, this one. And you know, I tried to groom my threads before I came on. And then they had also called for Oscar. And I told you guys that endive is a good, a good sub, but I'm also, my endive is all assigned already. So I am using Loden, which I think works just fine. So you can see it again here. It's, a, it's really a pretty color right there. So everything else is, is the called for. The only color I don't have in here is old brick. Um, so when I get to that, I'll, I'll make a decision. I just didn't feel like messing around with it this morning when I was starting. Okay, so that is what I'm working on this week still. A little bit more Monday through Thursday. Let me put this down here. Now, I'm going to go on to show you how I, my my method of, of I, I got question, I got a Somebody asked me to do it, to how I prep my my um, floss board. And I brought a couple of them down that I have. So these two are Retromantic Fripperies. This one I got, um, was handed out at the Attic's um, summer school. Is it on the back? Nope, it's not on the back. Uh, it was one of the first or second summer schools. Uh, so I've been, I've, I've done summer school twice. And I love this because it's got enough holes for a more colorful project. It's got a um, corner gauge. It's got a magnet. You can put your scissor or I would prefer to put my needle on there. And it's got a ruler here. And I really love it. And that's a little... Uh, bird. I don't know what they're called in English. I know in German um, this bird is a Meise and we had a Meise, um, a Finch I believe, not sure though, in our atrium when I came home the other day. Uh, they're beautifully colored and so we have a window that uh, a brick window that just tilts like that and we always leave it open. It's, it's up high <clears throat> and the birds do, there are birds that fly in and out of there. Not a lot, but um, some do. And I thought this was one of the ones that knew its way around. And I came through the door with the dogs and Millie saw it and started barking and the poor bird panicked and it flew straight into the glass because um, the front of the atrium is all glass and that's where the door is and was on the ground. And I thought it had broken its neck because it was doing funny things. And so I picked it up and I held it in my hand for a little bit and you know, I was like, I don't know what to do with this. And so I grabbed a cardboard box and I set the bird in there and it was, it was flopping sideways and, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't, I, I can't let it suffer. You know, if it's really injured and can't go anywhere, I can't let it suffer and I most certainly won't, I can't kill it. Um, so I, I need a man to do that. But so I put, put it in the box and I put the box outside uh, open um, and then my trainer came and I said, you're going to have to go kill that bird up there. I can't, you know? And, and so he went upstairs and he goes, you're smoking. He goes, there's no bird there. I was like, oh, is the bird gone? And the bird had recovered and left. So I was like, thank goodness. Okay. So long story about a floss board. And, um, this is a floss board by, uh, the, in the company of friends. Again, I don't. I don't think they're in business anymore. They used to make a lot of pretty um, paper cardboard stitching accoutrements. So all kinds of all kinds of ones. So what did I bring down? A oh, very easy. Okay. So I'm going to show you. Um, did 
we talk about this book? I don't know. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't last time. But I want to stitch this. What does it say? Simple Harvest. I love this pattern. Um, it calls for a Water Lilies kelp, I think, is, is, the, is the design. I don't have linen for it. Oh, and I don't have the floss. So let's just pretend that I brought my floss down. Did I? No. I bought some Gloriana Havana, Havana Brown, but it did not make it. Okay, so I, what I have kitted up in here is um, the Quaker House, which is so, 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 so cute. And I also want to stitch that ASAP. And this has only been kitted up for a decade, maybe. Not too long. Let's see where that... And it's on the other side. I'm sorry to be leafing through like this. No. Here. Ah, took forever. Here is the Quaker house. And so I have the um, flosses for it. So I'll just do one. Because usually, if, if, they're, if they come, you know, with their own little card, I tend not to do a floss board. But sometimes I will. I, yeah, it just depends on the mood. So I'll just take my um, Weeping Willow from Old Willow Designs. And this one's not cut, so I can just take my knot, this little slip knot, or whatever, you know, and pull it, and pull it off the card. And then, let's see if it fits through the smaller. Yeah, it does. So it, it'll just, I just take the end of it, right here, the one that was the top portion of the what was on the card and I just push it through the hole. And then I open up the loop again, the way it was and attach it just the same way as it was on the, on the floss ring. And then it's on my thread board. Now in order to um, keep track of what is this color, um, I take, I look at the symbol, and I will only put the symbol on here. I won't put the actual color unless I feel I need it. Um, it depends if I want to, if I think I'm going to have a lot left over, I might make a note of what this color is so that it can wander back onto its tag. And I do save the tags. I have these Avery fluorescent round stickers. You can see here half of them gone. And I just take a scissor and I cut this, I take a big scissor and I just cut it in half and I use half moons then. So, and I'll just take one off, doesn't matter. So it would be, you know, just the half of it like that, like that. And I will write on here the symbol, and if I wanted to make note of the color, I would probably itsy bitsy write it, write it around. And then the half moon, now I folded it in half so it won't stick anymore, but if I had cut it, then I would just put the half moon, I would just attach it, you know, glue it right here. So then when I'm done, I can just, I can just peel all these back off and use the thread board for another um, thing project the other options which would work well is Teresa actually Teresa kitten stitcher uh, put up a video a stitch with me video or hang with me video and she used a, a post-it note tape so you can probably get that pretty small and those come off very easily as well now that would lend itself well to somebody that starts that project and stitches it to the end because I would be afraid that post-it tape might fall off over the stretch of time that it takes me to do a project. So I will use the stickers. And when I'm done and pull it off, and if there's any glue residue back here, 
I can just take some lemon essential oil, a good lemon essential oil, and rub it, and it'll take that um, residue right off without harming, without harming the wood. The other option is you can use the, um, the stickies, but only the top portion. So you just cut and use this, this lightly gummed portion to write down your symbols or the color and stick it on your board. So um, I also brought down, it might be an option to do these little flags. Um, also post-it flags and you know cut them into strips and then write your, you probably get three out of one strip. So those are your options, I think. And then you have all these beautiful colors hanging off your board, you know, like this. And uh, I think they're fun. I do like them. And I love, I love these these stitcher tool, tool ones. So there's that. Okay, I'm gonna put that all back together. And now on to haul because more has come and more is coming. And I've heard that classic, no, not classic, general arts is um, opening back up. So I think those colors will start coming. And, and um, so I'm hoping that things will loosen up. All right, one minute. One moment. Okay, here we go. Now I found, I, I, I stumbled across the site while I was looking for 36 count fabric for these drums by Summer House Stitchworks. And they called for certain colors. I don't remember what they were, but I found a site that was called Cross Stitch Supply. And um, she had some 36 count uh, pictures as plus. Not the colors I was necessarily looking for, but colors that I could substitute. And she had a pretty good price on them. Uh, they were already discounted. And then she offered another 20% off uh, if you subscribe to her newsletter. So I was like, subscribe, absolutely. She also had a lot of Week Style Works and General Arts flosses at the time. And um, I did buy quite a few that I needed. But what I loved about her was she actually took a picture of the floss that, the actual floss that was there. And she would have, if she had two flosses by the same name, so let's say General Arts, well, we'll take and dive, you know. Um, so, and, and if it looked significantly different, if the dye lots were really different, she put, gave you two pictures. So you could actually see what floss you were buying, which is great for me that, ha you know, I have to do everything online. So that was fantastic. She got that order out like within 24 hours. The other person that does that is Anita's Little Stitches. She's really great too. And if it's not in stock with Anita's, and I know like one, two, three stitch, one, two, three stitch does it too, to a certain extent, um, you can't buy it. So you can't put it in your cart if it's not in stock, which I really like because, uh, you know, that holds up your order if it's not in stock and you don't know when it's coming in, etc. So. What I bought from Cross Stitch Supply is 36 count haunted linen. Now I'm not sure, if I picture this plus, I'm not sure if this is the linen I need or not. I do know I'm gonna use this linen. Uh, and this is Storm, 36 count Storm. I only need a sort, this is a fat quarter and I only need, uh, you saw how big the other one was, I don't need much and so, I was watching Georgia Girl Stitching. I don't even know what her name is. She's young, she has three, she's super young. Uh, she has three videos up and she's super talented and she's super fast. Anyways, <laughs> beautiful, young, <laughs> super fast, super talented. Gotta love it. Um, and she stitched a Alessandra Adelaide um, pattern called Zuka. So the pattern itself, the it's a pumpkin. It's green, well, it's orange and with a green stem. And she stitched it in grits and Weeks Dye Works grits for the body and chai for the stem on this color, some somewhat this color linen, and it was jaw-dropping stunning. 
and I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. That pumpkin was fantastic. So I'll probably use this one, but I'm not sure. I might use this one. So, and this is Lock, Lock Linen. If I picture this plus 36 count. Let me hold all three of them up. Ooh, yeah, so I kind of kind of did a 36 count binge. These look pretty close in the light, but they're not. They're, there's enough of a difference. Anyway, so two of them are for my drum and one I'm going to use for Zuka, which is on order. And why, I don't know, because when am I gonna start this? When it comes in the door, that's when I'm gonna start it because it it's that beautiful. I also picked up some 40 count mushroom from Zweigart. And Plum Street Sampler, A Shepherd's Song. What I love about this is the black house. Everything, you know, there's a lot of red houses, not so many black houses. I love the sheep. Who does? But the sheep are fantastic. I'm not, not keen on the fill in, but you gotta do what you gotta do. And <laughs> look at that dog. Is that a dog? Well, it's it's a very spotted dog. I usually change my dogs to mine, but he, oh, sorry about the focus. He's really fun, so he's gonna stay that way. And spring has sprung. I also buy some. Uh, Plum Street Sampler, which was uh, this mark, this market release. Um, okay, so that is from Cross Stitch Supply, and I bought flosses, and I don't need to hold them up. Then um, I got a bunch of stuff in from. Oh, and this one I bought there. Well, I've been I've been eyeing this sampler, the Sweet Temper Sampler from Plum Street, not Plum, Shakespeare's Peddler Kitten Stitcher. And I love the border. I'm just not too keen on the colors. I might, I mean, I might pull the colors and then look at it and I may girly this up a little bit. So this is, yeah, more into the reddish pinkish peachy color. We'll see. Um, okay, so I got all that from Crush It Supply. Then uh, I got um, a stack of stuff from Stitches and Things. Now Stitches and Things, they have a whole section and it's thousands of things that are 50% off and you just have to have patience and go through. And obviously I was really bored one day or I wasn't bored, but you know, I was distracting myself and I went through all the pages and just plucked things out that I liked and it took a while to come, but that's because she's working alone and that's no big deal. So. We'll go through them. These are all clearance items. This is Grace Myrtle Motif. This is a little bird. It's um, punch needle. And this is Estelle. And you just use two colors, whitewash, Weeks Dye Works whitewash and garnet. And the whitewash is so white, I bet you I can just use a white DMC. And garnet, I'd have to look at how variegated it is because I might just substitute DMC, but I think these, these are super cute. And it's really, I'm not a punch puncher, so this is a great beginner's project. So let me pull out and show you that there is not much to do. And there's not any intricate design, so that makes it very, very simple. And I can practice my punching a little bit. So that's, that's the bird. Um, there are two other birds. Sorry to say. <laughs> so I was like... I might have gotten this one half price, but the other two birds I'm going to have to pay full price for because now I want all three. Um, I'll show you what the other two look like. It's a really tiny picture, so maybe we can't see it. Okay, well, it stopped recording for some odd reason, so um, I'm going to have to smash these two together. The birds. So I went looking for them, and um, she has an Etsy shop, and so I found them there. But I haven't ordered them yet, but they're in my cart. We'll see. Then I picked up Stacy Nash's Mary's Work Sampler Bag. How cute is that? Love it. And I picked up a Pineberry Lane. It's Mrs. McGuire Bee Charmer. So cute. She's got talent. 
I think her name is Wendy. Wendy Steis van Eymeren. I probably said that all wrong, but I think she's a very talented person. Then I picked up Uncle Sam 1776 Pillow Keep by Primitive Stitching. How cute is that? How cute. So there's hope that I can get these done anyways. I picked up uh, La Di Da, the Garden Birds. I don't know. It just appealed to me. Fun, fun. Oh, I'm goofy for these. Love these. Probably, I don't know if I'll ever stitch them, but I just think they're so fun. Cricut Collection, I picked up January and February. I have May, I think. I thought I took this back out of my cart, but obviously I didn't because it came, but it's beautiful. This is Happy Hearts by Victoria Sampler. I have never stitched a Victoria Sampler, but so as I was going through, because there's so many pages, I just popped things into my cart that I thought I may, might be interested in, and then I tend to go through and pare it back down. So I thought I'd taken it out, but it is really, really pretty, really pretty. These are the sides. So, and there is a thread pack that I could buy. I don't know. I probably won't ever stitch this. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my S for my mermaid S. Got to stitch this one. Oh, and this. I was scrolling through her regular stuff, her new stuff, and this was not a clearance item. Um, and I saw this sampler and I thought, oh, I've never seen this sampler before, and it is so pretty. It is by Smoky Mountain Stitches, called A Shepherd's Care, and it's from 1794. And the girl's name is Sarah Hopcraft, and it does say it's a reproduction sampler. Check out the linen. Linen is 35 count fossil by Picture This Plus. I'm gonna have to get me some. I think this is fantastic. So this is done over two, but the same border again is done over one. Sorry for the glare down here too. Um, the first is done over one. There is a herringbone. Where is there a herringbone? Oh. Here, this is herringbone stitch, this inner border right there that go, goes along there. You see it? And let's see, what else do we have? Uh, there's alpha eyelid alphabet and a satin stitch alphabet. Well, y'all know how I love eyelid alphabets. Oops, well, we'll see. Okay, but I think it's a beautiful sampler. And it's chartered for DMC Anchor Overa Swap. So you can take your pick. Um, so it counts for it, it calls for a 35 count, but the design sizes are given given are 28 count, 32 count, 36 count, and 40 count. Okay, I would probably stitch it on 40 count despite the over one. Um, that's that's the haul. Wait, no, not quite. My uh, monthly linen from Color and Cotton came. It's beautiful. So this is. Reminds me of that linen that Nicole's Needlework is stitching um, lilies on, but it's a 46 count, which is perfect. Um, I might do a floss toss, and it's a fat half, so it would definitely fit. Okay, I think, oh, the winner of the $25 gift certificate to your LNS. So now I have to confess that I recorded half of this video already once and didn't push the button. And I was like, what? You know, I was, I was talking and, and um, having a good time. And then I realized like the timer up top is not running at all because I was looking to see how much time I had um, used up. So then I had to start over. Anyway, so I did the whole random Thing and I don't want to do it again because we have a genuine winner and the winner is Donna Guest and she wrote no LNS here in the UK so I normally buy online from Peakside Needleworks so Donna 
I will leave a comment on your comment and we'll work out how we do this in pounds and with peak side needlework. Okay, friends, that's it for today. Um, I enjoyed it. I'm really enjoying Mania. Um, I'm tempted to start bigger things, but I'm not going to. I'm trying, I'm gonna try not to, let's put it that way. Not that I'm, if I say I'm not going to, then that might be a lie, so I don't wanna lie. Um, that's it for today. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Well, you still have your Sunday. Mine's over pretty much. And um, I'm going to sit down and work on Stitch Every Day by Hands On Design for the rest of the evening. I will talk to you guys next week. Uh, take care and stay happy, healthy, and terrific until we meet again.